This is the Earth Science Classroom. Welcome back to the channel. This video is on two terms we find in soil science primarily, and they are called alluviation and alluviation. Now, these two are very, very similar terms, but they mean different things. And this video is going to discuss what each term does, the, the processes that they do, and then how they combine and how they work within the soil to form a certain layer called the E horizon. Okay, so there are these terms, and when you look at soil and soil science and pedology and agriculture, just for the geology or the minerals or even the chemistry of the soil, you're going to look or encounter these two terms, alluviation and alluviation. Now, bad thing is they sound very, very similar and they're spelt very, very similar. One is with an I with two L's and the other one was an E with one L. Now, to begin these terms, we have to discuss what's the primary or the main reason for these terms occurring in the soil. And the main thing is the water cycle. The water cycle, precipitation, evaporation, transpiration, overland flow, the process of meteoric water coming from the atmosphere with gravity down to the soil, hitting the soil, and what happens to it when it hits the soil. Is it gonna go in the soil and do infiltration and percolation through the pores and the spaces? Will it evaporate on the surface through puddles and, and other reservoir deposits? Or will it flow over the land based on the gradient, the relief, the slope? What we're looking at is the climate and the landscape and the how the water moves through the soil. Water is a fantastic medium for carrying stuff. We know this from hydrology and the oceans that water carries material, ice carries material, and water going through the soil is exactly the same. It's gonna carry small materials, small particles, and anything that's soluble, like salts and ions and elements, it's gonna carry that in the water in the soil, down through different layers, from the surface down towards the bedrock or towards the water table. But it's gonna carry all this stuff. Now this also works with both mechanical weathering and chemical weathering of the soil, the physical soil, and the alteration of chemicals, but it also is gonna carry in suspension all of these materials down to a deeper level. So that's what these two terms are all about. It's the water carrying the materials down to deeper layers of the soil, based on different levels of maturity of the soil and age and how many horizons there are or layers. So as the water goes through the soil, it's gonna pick up small particles of minerals. Whatever the soil is made of, any of the eight elements and the minerals it's gonna be made of and the, and the rock that is the bedrock that the soil derives from or anything, any kind of deposition or deposited rock or material that's, that the soil is made from, that's gonna break up and go into the water based on how resistant the minerals are to weathering. Then you're gonna have all of the organic matter and the colloids, the small particles of humus that are the resistant form of the decomposing material that's gonna be in the water as well. Now this will flow down. Now, when the water takes all these materials from a certain layer, let's say the O and the A layer, at the surface, the topsoil and the surface horizon, the litter, that is called alluviation. And that is Latin for washed out. So alluviation over here on the blue, that's the process of taking and washing out all of the small particles and ions and elements out of the layer and move them down to deeper layers. So that is going to create alluviation, which is the enrichment or the storage or the or the depositing or dumping of the carried materials by the water at a certain depth whereby the water can't go any further or there's too small capillary spaces or the bulk density is too high and the small particles will be deposited and dumped or enriched in a certain depth or certain layer of the soil and this is called the B horizon. The B horizon is the accumulation of this material that is transported and leached and percolated down by the water and then just accumulated 
and built up in the B horizon, and these areas are called alluvial zones. Now, there are other alluvial zones in small mounds in other parts of the soil, or even deeper than the B horizon on occasion, but the B horizon is the most common and the most, the layer with the most accumulation. And the accumulation of this material is called alluvium. So don't get it confused with the E versus the I. The E is the washed out water flowing through a layer, taking out all the the chemicals and minerals and ions from that layer and alluviation with the eye is where the water is going to leave all of that material and it's going to be out of suspension and be dropped and deposited at a certain depth which is the creation or the thickness of the B horizon. So in terms of location this E horizon which generally forms from the O and the A being leached out material from the O and A and percolation, which is through alluviation. So the E horizon, the E stands for alluviation. So alluviated horizon. So this horizon is basically this layer of the soil, which is generally found below the A horizon and above the B horizon. So it's just below the topsoil and it's the first part of the subsoil. And it's generally caused by the A horizon being thinner because you need to have a lot of that material leave the A horizon and make it less thick or thinner and then flow down and create this thin layer of very bleached light in color layer which is called the E horizon. Now the E horizon does have a mineral component obviously pore spaces water and air and maybe some microorganisms, decomposition maybe, that depth, maybe some roots, but you're gonna have a concentration of sand and silt because the clay, which is one of the three main mineral constituents of the soil, that'll be washed out down to the B horizon through this alluviated process. So the clay is gonna accumulate in the B horizon. Now you can see this picture here, we have this lovely uh, exposure of a soil profile, and the, you see the surface horizon with vegetation, you see this uh, small O and A horizon here, the uh, O, the dark, based on the uh, humus content, organic content, and then you've got the A horizon right here, the darker brown, and then this, this nice, really contrasting light white and bleached, like pearly white layer, that's the E horizon. Now it's kind of thick, the A is thin and the E is thick, so you have a lot of percolation, perhaps a lot of water, perhaps a very, uh, as a a location with a climate that's high in rainfall and low in evaporation, maybe a deciduous forest, a mid-latitude forest, and you have this nice E horizon, and then you have this nice boundary here where you have the accumulation of the clay and the soluble salts and the nutrients, things like calcium, magnesium, sodium, oxygen, going into the B horizon right here in the subsoil. So the E horizon is that kind of like layer of soil that's left over, mineral composition, small amounts of organic composition because of the color, is less organic material, but all of the leaching, percolation, and alluviated materials are being transported through this E horizon down to the B horizon below. This is the Earth Science Classroom. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the content. Uh, check out more videos on our channel, and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you again.